Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a non-standard equation, or should I call this transcendental? We have two sine pi x over two equals x squared plus one all over x. And we're gonna to try to solve for x values. I'm also going to show you a graph at the end, which will hopefully help us understand what's going on. So why did I call this equation non-standard? Because it has different types of functions on either side. We have the trigonometry on the left, and we have the rational on the right. There are different kinds of functions, equations, whatever, and you can't solve this uh, problem by normal standard means. If you had polynomials or rationals on both sides like this, then you could probably solve it, right? Cross multiply, that becomes a polynomial, easy. But this is very different because we have the trigonometric and the rational. So how do we deal with these kinds of equations? Well, every problem comes with its own problems or issues. And because we have trigonometry, one of the methods that we could use is to find upper or lower bounds. Okay, what do I mean by that? So sign of a real number, if you're looking for real solutions, of course, right? if you're not, then I don't know what to say. But if, suppose we're looking for real solutions because most of the time in, on this channel, uh, we look for real solutions. By the way, I have another channel called A plus PI where I look for complex solutions. You can also go ahead and check it out. Anyway, so how do we approach this problem? Like I said, for the trigonometry, I think we can use the upper and lower bounds. What does that mean? If this is real, then sine of alpha, if alpha is real, is always going to be between negative 1 and positive 1 inclusive, which means those values are also included. If you think about the unit circle, sine is 1 for pi over 2 radians, for 3 pi over 2 or negative pi over 2 radians, it's negative 1, and it's 0 at 0 and pi. You get the idea? So that's what we're talking about. And unit circle also kind of tells you, hey, you can't really go beyond those values. Those are your maximums and minimums. So how do we use this information? Well, I have the sign of something, right? So I can replace alpha with pi x over 2. And this inequality will still be correct as long as x is real. Because pi is real, 2 is real, all is real, right? So everything is real. Okay, then I can safely say that sine pi x over 2 is going to be between negative 1 and 1. We could probably call these non-strict inequalities maybe because they can also equal the number. So we don't necessarily say strictly greater than negative 1 because it could also equal, right? Yes, but I have 2 times that. No worries. We can always multiply inequalities by a positive number. We can also multiply by negative numbers, but you got to be extra careful. So let's multiply by 2, multiply by 2, and multiply by 2. It doesn't matter on which side you multiply. So you get the following. Negative 2 is less than or equal to 2 sine pi x over 2, and that's less than or equal to 2, which means if sine cannot exceed 1, 2 sine cannot exceed 2. Obviously, that makes sense, right? Okay, so, but... How do we use that information? We have something else on the right-hand side. Great. That's the critical part. First of all, notice that x cannot be 0, right? Because if x is 0, left-hand side is going to be 0, right-hand side is going to be undefined. So 0 does not equal undefined, as far as I know. Okay, so x does not equal 0. So under those conditions, I can go ahead and write this expression as x plus 1 over x, which is ob obviously much better than the original version. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to split it into two cases. You know why? Because it depends. So if x is positive, then x plus 1 over x is greater than or equal to 2. Now you might be saying, like, where, where, where on earth does this come from? I know some people are going to say, how did you come up with that? Let me show you. This is, first of all, something that you can use uh, AMGM inequality to prove, or you can think about it this way too. Why don't we consider when X is positive, why don't we consider this difference? And if I make a common denominator, I'm going to be getting X squared minus 2X plus 1 divided by X. And notice that X is positive. 
and the numerator is x minus 1 squared, which is also positive, or at least non-negative, right? It can be 0, of course. So this needs to be greater than or equal to 0. But that just implies the inequality that I, that I just gave you. So for positive x values, this is true. Nice. But we're going to make it nicer. What happens if x is negative? Then the opposite happens. Think about it. If x is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, so that's the borderline. If x is negative 1, negative 1 plus negative 1 is negative 2. So x, but of course, if you use something like negative 5, you're going to get a smaller negative value, not a larger one. So in other words, if x is negative, this is going to be on the opposite side, less than or equal to negative 2. How could we write this? we we'll probably write it as absolute value of x plus 1 over x, uh, greater than or equal to 2, right? Would this work? I think so. Yeah, we could write it like this too. But I want to split it up because we don't have absolute value. So, you know, it's better to look at it case by case. Awesome. Now, where do we go from here? You got to remember this. The left-hand side is between negative 2 and 2, but the right-hand side is outside that. What is that supposed to mean? Take a look. Here's the number line. My trig says... All right, you got to be between negative 2 and 2, inclusive, right? Yep. And then the other guy says, the other guy says, I'm going to use the same, try to use the same scale, same format and colors. And the other guy says, okay, your expression needs to be greater or equal to 2 or less than or equal to 2. What is that supposed to mean? It means that, that cannot be equal? Yes, they can be only at these values. Look at that. The only overlap, which is uh, point-wise, right, are at those points, which means, yes, 2 sine pi x over 2 can be equal to 2 when x plus 1 over x is equal to 2. So this gives us two, two equations. Well, this, this is considered as one equation because they're both equal to 2. So from here, we get the following. First of all, x needs to be positive in this case, plus this needs to be 1. So sine pi x over 2 needs to be sine pi over 2. But of course, you're allowed to add multiples of 2 pi, right? So you can kind of write this as pi x over 2 equals pi over 2 plus 2 pi n, where n is an integer. And what happens on the other side of things? On the other side, the same thing happens if x is negative, then sine pi x over 2 needs to equal negative 1. I mean, sorry, 2 times that is negative 2. And that is equal to x plus 1 over x because x is negative. This is true. Okay, make sense? So it looks like we have two intersection points. Let's go ahead and check the graph. Hopefully that will convince you even more. Because, well, from alpha can graph this. Awesome, right? Yay! We have two intersection points and they happen to be at 1 and negative 1. If you look at the graphs, this is the sign and this is the thing. Oh, by the way, I gave you a solution for pi over 2, but from there, you should be getting x equals 1 and x equals negative 1 because if you set this equal to pi over 2, you get x equals 1, right? And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time in another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.